that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with sports, okay? If you are on a basketball court, there is a point guard, a couple shooting guards, a forward, maybe two, a center, okay? There's different positions played on that basketball court, okay? Um, if the point guard is getting tired and needs a break, the coach says, hey, Nathan, you would never be a point guard. Never. You would be a center. Um, okay, so the center needs a break. This center is, who's your favorite center? Okay. Um, Joel, Joel what? Joel Embiid. Bede? Embiid. Embiid. You picked a real easy name for me. Okay, that's an easier one to say. Okay, so DeMarcus Cousins is tired, and he has to come out of the game. We are going to substitute someone of equal value, Nathan Atlas. Power forward, sure. Center, power forward. Um, so you take something out, you put another center in, right? If you take a center out, you put a center in. If you take a point guard out, you would put a point guard in. You're substituting. Okay, it's called a substitution. You do it in soccer. You do it in volleyball. volleyball. You take a setter out, you put a setter in. Um, you do it in music. Are any of you music people? Nobody? Yeah, so you know music. Anybody else in here? Sing? Play, play an instrument? Okay, so think music here. Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, musically. If I take out a half note and I need to fill that with something, I'm either going to put a half rest in mm -hmm. or two quarter notes in, right? You're going to put something in that holds the same value, okay? That is substitution. You take something out, you have to replace it with something equal to it. Substitution. Do you get that concept? You take out a what? take out two. A different two, yes. Okay, so here's how substitution goes. You are going to isolate a variable. What does it mean to isolate a variable? Get it by itself, okay? Once you isolate a variable, then substitution is substituting, and I will show you what I mean by that right now. First example, okay? You will have a system of equations that looks like this, for instance. Y equals 3X, and X plus Y equals negative 32, okay? Now, on the quiz you just took, you graphed them, right? This is not beautiful to graph, because X plus Y equals negative 32 would be so far off the graph, it would be just not easy, okay? So instead, this one we're going to solve by substituting. Now here's what you do. You isolate a variable. Do either one of those equations have an isolated variable? Uh, no. A variable that's by itself. Yes. Which one? The top one, right? Y is by itself. Oops, we took the pen away. Y is by itself up here, so it is isolated, okay? Now I know that Y is equal to 3x. So if you look in your next equation, there's a y that we can substitute a 3x into. Do you see it? Right here, we have a y. We can take that y out and put this 3x in because y and 3x are equal. Do you see that? Aww. Yes? Okay, so if I know x plus y equals negative 32, I'm going to replace that with x plus 3x because 3x and y are equal to each other, as we saw up there. Okay, so it's x plus 3x equals negative 32. So I'm still using this equation. I'm just taking the y out and putting the 3x in. Substitution. Why do I need to substitute? Why can't I just solve this equation or this equation? 
Right, you have two different variables, right? You can't get a number from two different variables. You need to keep one variable in the problem. So we have just x's here. Now we can solve this equation. What's x plus 3x? 4x. 4x. So 4x equals negative 32. What do I do to solve that? You divide. So x is negative 8. Okay, so that's our x value. But when we solved these, when we graphed, we always got a point, right? So we need to know what the y value is also. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back up to your original equation, and you're going to plug it in to solve for the y. So if y equals 3x and x is negative 8, then I can say y equals 3 times negative 8. So y is negative 24. That means my answer is negative 8, negative 24. Okay? That is substitution. You're solving for a variable, and then you're substituting what that variable equals, and then solving for x and solving for y. What would we do? Can I move on? What would we do for this one? Okay, reset your brain. Pay attention on this one. If I have y equals 2x plus 7 and y equals x minus 1, okay? Here's your steps. First step, isolate a variable. So look at this problem. Is there a variable that is isolated? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Y on both of them, right? This one has two variables that are isolated. So you can go either direction with this one. Um, but I know that Y is equal to X minus 1. So I can take out this Y and put in my X minus 1. If I do that, I get X minus 1 equals what? 2x plus 7. So I'm just working off of this equation, plugging the x minus 1 up here. Okay, so once you've isolated a variable, then you substitute, and then your last step is solve for x and y. Okay, so here, x minus 1 equals 2x plus 7. How do I solve that for x? Take the x away here. We're going to take away an x, take away an x. So 2x minus x is x. So this is done. This is gone. You have x plus 7 equals negative 1. And then you're going to take away the 7. So negative 8 is your x value. Okay. How do I find y? Plug it back in. You plug it back in. And now here's the thing. Both of those equations have y by itself. You may plug it into either equation. You should get the same answer regardless. Okay. So I'm going to plug it into this one just because it's a simpler uh, equation. So if it's y equals x, Right? This x is what number? Negative 8, right? It's the number we just solved for. So we're just plugging it in right here. So y equals negative 8 minus 1, which is what? Negative 9. Okay, so your answer is negative 8 for your x value, negative 9 for your y value. Okay, that is substitution. How are we doing so far? Okay. Um,
one last problem. And then if we need another example of any of the three that we've done, we will do another example. Um, technically, I guess you would say this is example two. Okay, so we just did example two. This will be example three. And this is the hardest of them because if you follow your steps, you have to do every step in here. So you're going to start with 3y plus 4x equals 14 and negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. Okay, those are our two equations. What was the first step you're supposed to do? Isolate. Okay, so are any of our variables by themselves on one side of the equation? No. So here's where you have a choice to make. Um, fortunately, this one is a pretty easy choice. You look at every one of your variables. So you look here, 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 and here, and you ask yourself, does any one of them not have a coefficient? What's a coefficient? A number behind the, in front of the variable. The number in front of the variable. So do any of those variables not have a number in front of them? The y, the y okay? That's the one you want to solve for, because that's the simplest one to solve for. So this one is what we're going to isolate, okay? So now look at that equation, negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. How do I get y by itself? We're not going to subtract the y because that's just going to create, you could, but it's going to create more steps for you. You want to leave the y there and get rid of the 2x. How do I do that? You're going to add. So we're going to add 2x, add 2x, and I get y equals... 2x minus 3, okay? So now this equation that we just found is the same thing as this equation. We just rearranged how it's written. So we're going to be done with this one, and we're going to use the black one instead, okay? So now look at my system. I have the red was 3y plus 4x equals 14, um, the black is 2x minus 3 for our y value. How can I substitute? Where am I going to put something? If y is equal to this, 2x minus 3, which variable am I taking out so I can put that in? The y, right? This y right here is going to get replaced by 2x minus 3, because y and 2x minus 3 are equal in value, right? y equals 2x minus 3. So we're going to do this equation again. We're just going to substitute. So I'm going to do 3 times my y. What's y? 2x minus 3. OK, so that's 3y. And then we just finish the equation, plus 4x equals 14, okay? Now from here, you guys know, or you should know how to solve that. You're going to simplify and solve for x. So what's my first step to solve for x? You're going to distribute. So it's going to be 6x minus 9 plus 4x equals 14. 6x plus 4x is 10x minus 9 equals 14. What do I do next? Add the 9. So you get 10x, this is gone, equals 23. And then you're going to divide by 10. So you get x equals 2.3. Okay, now you have options here.
for where you plug that x in to get your y, but which would be the best equation of the three that we have? Which equation is the best one to plug an x value into? It's always the isolated one, okay? So if you look at our three equations, the x getting plugged in here is going to be your easiest. So we're going to say y equals 2 times our x value, 2.3, minus 3. Okay, then you simplify that. y equals 4.6 minus 3, which means y is 1.6. Okay? What's your answer? To the problem, the solution to this system. How do you write your answer on these? Just like when we graphed, how did you write your answer? Two lines meet at a point. You put it in parentheses, right? So your x value is 2.3 and your y value is 1.6. Okay, so your answer to the question is that. 2.3 comma 1.6. Okay. Ow. Okay. Um, like I said, this is a tough lesson. There's a lot going on here. Um, if you need to, I'm going to post this in Canvas. You can go back tonight, and you don't even have to watch the whole lesson, right? Fast forward and find the place that you're getting stuck and watch it. Or go on Khan Academy and type in algebra solving systems by substitution. And there will be another version, another way for you to see it. Um, just make sure you isolate the variable. And then you plug in what you've, you substitute, right? So substitute after you isolate. And then you can solve for x and solve for y. Okay? Um, I'm going to give you time right now.